Hello and welcome guys to this new video of Let Me Hear. Today I'm gonna do an Arcane Torrent guide for the wizard in Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls. Um, I will go over the pros and cons, early and end game performance, ease of play and if it's beginner friendly. Then I will go over the build itself, the potential best in slot items and do a quick play test on Torment 4. So, pros and cons. I go with the cons first, um, because that's kind of how you present a build if you like it. Um, one con is that the area of effect is rather small. As you can see, it's a rather small area of effect. You can control it pretty well and it's mostly fine for most groups of monsters, but it's rather small. If you compare it with like skills like uh, Wave of Force, Heat Wave, which is pretty popular too, that's a huge AoE. So that's that. Another problem is it has a, a cast time. As you probably can see, when I press the button, until I actually deal damage is around about a second. So, if I arrive at a pack and want to kill it, it takes roughly a second before the pack takes damage. That's kind of a problem. Furthermore, it's a channeling ability. What does that mean? Um, it means that you have to stand still while you cast it. You can't move, not a single inch. That makes you vulnerable over um, ground effects or monsters that charge you, jump at you, shit at your face with totally insane damage, I don't know. And it also means that attack speed is a bad stat. You don't wanna stack attack speed on this build, otherwise you will run quickly out of arcane power and you don't want that to happen. Another contra is that it's arcane damage only. As you can see all runes are arcane damage. So you can only uh, stack arcane damage since um, fire damage or lightning damage will have no effect whatsoever. Meaning you can't use cool items like the Cinder Code, uh, which are utilized in many other builds. It has little to zero utility for your group besides your damage. Um, you can do a little bit with skills like Black Hole or uh, Frost Snow, which I will go over later on. Um, but the only other utility I found so far is the passive elemental exposure combined with the four set of Tarasha, which is great for this build, but I'll go over that later on. So the playstyle is rather slow. Uh, you play it for it, you kill a pack, you walk, elite pack, a wow, frost nova, nuke it down next pack. So it's not like the flashy, I don't know, barb whirlwinding around, jumping from pack to pack with awesome earthquake set, everything explodes playstyle. It's just a little bit boring. And the build diversity is also not that great. It's okay, since you can swap this skill around. <laughs> And you might be able to use something like the verse set to include Archon or something. But you may need deal damage with Archon Torrent. So. Now, the pros. What's good about this build? Absurd damage. The damage is just insane. With my character um, currently sitting at 1.4 million damage buffed and some toughness and stuff. Um, single target on a boss or something, my DPS is around about 80 to 100 million per second. No joke. Um, AoE, the same. As I said, the AoE is kind of small, but everything fries instantly and packs melt down. I can solo Torment 5 easily and everything is just dying. So that's great. Um, you have absolutely no item requirements really. So you can start this build with the absolute worst gear possible and you will deal fine I guess on normal and start to gear a great character. It's easy to play. You don't need much skill, you just point and click and shit dies. Um, 
that's related to it. It's a great start to finish build. You can start that build with a fresh level 70 character and you can play for 500 hours and still play this build if you want because it's great end game. So I often run Torment 6 um, runs with my group and I don't see any other build really much better than this one besides maybe Archon but the item requirements of Archon are so high that I don't really recommend it and the Wand of Woe spec, yeah, good luck finding one. So another good thing about this build, four slots of your uh, equipment which are best in slot in my opinion actually craftable. So that leaves nine slots that you have to find or gamble and since Kadala now offers torment only um, legendaries, you can gamble the rest nine slots. So even if you don't have your wizard geared at all, you can just farm shots with another character and gamble Kadala to get what you want. Um, since it's a channeling ability, it provides consistent DPS, which is very important, um, especially on higher torments. If you play a spec that's high bursty DPS, um, on normal torments you will do fine, but on higher torments those skills will decrease in value because you might deal 250 million damage instant with, I don't know, media with molten impact, that's easily achievable, and that might kill elites uh, from one, torment 1 to torment 3 or, five or 4, but if you farm torment 6, after you hit that elite with that absurd damage, you will be sitting at a 16 second cooldown and deal no damage whatsoever. So that's not great. Consistent channeling damage is great. This build is also quite tanky. Uh, you utilize passes like Unraving Will or Blur plus the energy armor to, ra to, uh, to gain very high toughness stats. I'm currently at 14 million and I'm not even trying. I could get more. I, I could use prismatic armor. I will be sitting at 16 million and I could change my gear around a bit so to get even more if I didn't use Andariels. And yeah. So very high room for toughness. Um, it has a great, maybe even the best synergy with the four piece tar set. Um, the tar set not only grants damage to all um, elements, which is great since the tar rusher set deals all elements and damage, but it procs on the medias that, at least with my spec, crit up to 30 million, which is a lot, and it provides arcane power regeneration which is most of the Im most important stats you want to have. Versed is also possible. I don't use it because I don't like Archon. If you like Archon and you want to utilize Versed, do so. Go for the gloves, the boots and the pants for the three set with the uh, Ring of Royal Grandeur to gain the full bonus. Um, but if you really want to play Archon you probably need a lot of cooldown reduction and you suffer a lot of DPS for it and maybe even a lot of toughness and I don't know if in a rift situation it's really worth it. So, early to, early to end game progression. It's a great build throughout. You can literally start a character level to 70, switch to this build and have a blast and you can play this build for 200 hours and you will gradually improve. It's great. It's very easy to start with since the build is not very complicated and you don't really need build enabling items or something like that. F for example like the Earthquake set and the Lot Socks which are quite hard, uh, quite hard to get. Um, still you have very much room for improvement. Um, there are so many items that you can acquire that will increase your DPS substantially that you can have a hunt for these items for like month. Like, I'm still searching for two items to uh, perfectionize my set. 
which is the tall amu and the ice climbers boots so I'm still hunting what's also great it combines toughness and high DPS so it's great for starters since you can ramp up the difficulty pretty uh, easily and still do well and it the build is really um, great for groups since you have a easy DPS um, there might be better starting builds though um, since this build doesn't have really fast playstyle um, stuff like I don't know the flummy spec with heat wave might be a little better because you can just start a step which you can't do with arc and torrent so there might be better specs but I think it's great so ease of play and beginner friendly yes it's totally beginner friendly it's maybe most of the one of the most beginner friendly builds um, some of you might say well I would say arcane orb with frozen orb is the most beginner friendly build it's easy and you do quite high AOE yeah I played that build um, a lot in the first couple days of Reaper Souls release because it was overpowered. Now that it's fixed to deal great damage with it, you have to actually position yourself very uh, cautiously, uh, cautiously, and that's not really beginner friendly. Also, you need some items to make this work really, and if you start with nothing, you won't deal any damage with it. So it's a very fluid playstyle. You get used to it pretty quickly. I mean, there's nothing much to it. You just kill packs and go further, kill some more. Oh, leap pack, cross nova, black hole, whatever. Kill it. It's pretty simple. Um, also, you have a very small amount of skills to manage. You have the three buffs, then you have arcane torrent, you have teleport to move around or get out of stuff, and then you have one utility spell. Um, pretty easy to play in my opinion and I think it's great to, to learn and understand the elemental damage system of Reaper Souls which totally changes how you look at items in vanilla all that mattered was um, damage in your profile that's not re that important anymore much more important is stuff like arcane damage now and arcane torrent damage like on the braces, on the helmet with the Andarius, uh, moonlight ward, stone of jordan and stuff like arcane damage uh, damage on your boots and your offhand and something so since this build performs well every time it's great for people to start looking at those things because they can gradually improve their gear and still start to see which stats are really good on items. So that's to ease of play and beginner friendliness. Now the build. So main source of DPS is obviously Arcane Torrent. You definitely choose that over Disintegrate. Disintegrate damage, I tested it. It's terrible. Even with this Slorex Madness Wand, which provides, I don't know, 30% disintegrate damage, Arcane Storm is superior. I recommend the Cascade Rune. Uh, it adds a huge AoE and single target damage component. In my case, I see crits popping up of around 25 to 30 million extra, just like that. Um, if arcane power is an issue though you can use power stone I don't think it's worth it the 2% chance means that every 50 attacks you will see an arcane orb popping up that will restore 50 arcane power and it's not even useful for your group so um, I think you don't need it disruption might be useful in groups 
if you have two people using arcane torrent one of them might be using disruption to buff uh, his damage and the damage of his ally by 15 percent but if you go solo and or you are the only wizard in the group definitely use cascade the other two runes just no death blossom don't get fooled by the damage it's terrible since you can't control where you shoot so your effective DPS will be much lower and arcane mines it takes just too long to set this up when you farm a good group shit dies before these mines go up so it's not really useful teleport it's basically just a movement skill but it's also great for escape and potentially a good uh, toughness boost for the rune I use safe passage because I love this 5, se five second 25 percent damage reduction buff especially when I get out of like poison arcane waller shit that would kill me if I don't teleport out and after that I take left damage so that's really useful I really recommend that um, in torment 4 or higher other ones to use a wormhole great for mobility got nerfed quite a lot but still that's a hundred yards that's like two dashing strikes of a monk so still great um, use it on the lower torments I don't really need it in groups because well you're quite running away from your group so just use self passage um, reversal kind of interesting um, they changed it in the recent patch so the remaining cooldown after using reversal is set to one second so if you reverse you can use teleport instantly again which is kind of cool I never te really tested that so I don't know how useful this skill actually is and I think that's kind of personal preference but it takes a lot of skill to master this so for starters just rely on these two runes fracture you don't need that if you want mirror images use the skill because those won't do nothing and calamity um, it was kinda cool with cosmic strand the source that gave teleport the wormhole rune so you could basically spam calamity f four times stunning an enemy for four seconds and dealing like 600 percent weapon damage but now i don't think it's usable anymore so stick with self passage wormhole or reversal whatever you prefer magic weapon straight dps boost um, you really just use it for DPS. I don't know any better slot right there. Um, I use Force Weapon for more damage, 10% up to 20%. That's great. Um, you could probably use Deflection if you have EHP issues, but the rest is absolutely not usable. I tried Conduit, but I don't really see why. Because 79 Arcane Power. I channel around 14 per second so attacks have the chance to restore one no I rather have 10 percent more damage uh, familiar with spark flint I use spark flint because I can sustain mark and power and to proc my terror rusher since spark flint does fire damage um, yeah 10 percent damage is just nice you can use Arcanaut when you have uh, arcane power issues especially when you start using this build you will probably have arcane uh, power issues because you're probably using a quite fast weapon and maybe have some attack speed on your gear so it's fine to use that until you get some good gear to switch to spark fin. but I really recommend it when you have the task set that you use spark fin. Um energy armor it's basically just a huge uh, EHP boost. 35% armor is great since wizards don't have that much armor in the first place. I use pinpoint barrier to gain some DPS because I don't need that much toughness. Um, 
just use it when your toughness is fine and you don't die. If you die, switch to prismatic armor. 25% resistance is, is huge. Energy tap and absorption, not really worth it. Force armor, maybe, but well, the only way I die to burst is mainly being frozen, because frozen on torment five to six deals like a hundred fifty thousand damage to me, and it might deal like a hundred thousand then, but since I'm frozen, I'm gonna die anyway, so. I don't see any reason to use force armor. I would rather value prismatic armor over that because you probably reduce the damage more by using that. Alternative, you can use ice armor with frozen storm, uh, ice reflects, whatever you want. Um, good thing about ice armor, it re uh, reduces melee damage by 12%, it does not rec uh, reduce your arcane power which makes your channel more and it can potentially proc the Tyrasha set bonus with Frozen Storm or Ice Reflect but I don't recommend it. I really value the 35% armor over that and I use Frost Nova to proc my Tyrasha which I really like more. But it's personal preference of course, you can do whatever you want. Now the last slot I see most people use black hole and black hole is great. It's a potential huge DPS boost with spell steel. It does very good crowd control with the suck in and two second enemies float around action. It's a potential Tarasha proc. You could use it for fire damage. Um, you could also use it for cold damage. You could also use it for lightning damage. Um, or you could just buff yourself and another good thing is that the AoE uh, in which the cross control takes part is quite high. Runes I suggest absolute zero if you want to and you need some cold damage to proc Tyrasha but since it's a 12 second cooldown I don't know really and since you don't have any cold spells in your spec mm, it might buff the damage of the media a little bit but I think I don't think it's worth it. Event Horizon, interesting if you have really high issues with elite packs, otherwise I don't recommend it. Spell Steel, definitely the best rune, since it reduces the damage of the enemy hit by 10%, which is great, uh, especially for a group if you have some hard melee hitting en enemies and your monk is, I don't know, tanking them to help them a little bit out and you get a huge DPS boost you can basically easy double your damage for five seconds great to burst down packs and something but well I use first number super massive maybe if you lead lightning damage but uh, I would recommend really stick to spell steel so frost nova frost nova's also is a potential damage boost. It has good CC, freeze is good. Um, it's shorter than the black hole, but I don't know, I really like it because if you found trash on, uh, in a really good group on Torment 6 and do the trash farming action for XP, black hole can kinda suck because in this two seconds that the enemies are sucked in, they cannot die. So, if you're melting down packs with your group, it's kind of not cool if, if you can't die for two seconds, otherwise you could kill them faster, but it's fine in rifts, I guess. Mm. DCC of cooldown is, uh, of Frosten was also pretty good. It always procs Tyrasha set bonus, yes. It does not say that in the tooltip, but Frost Nova actually deals damage. You can test that. Frost Nova deals 1% of your weapon damage with this nothing but enough to proc, so I use it. And yeah, so that's great. The area of effect is not so great like um, Black Hole, but it's fine. I mostly use it to freeze elites and burst them down. 
and the cooldown is a little bit shorter, especially with Cold Snap. So, the runes. Shatter, I don't know why you would ever use that. If you kill trash mobs, you don't need a freeze to really control them, and since Frost Nova does no damage, it's really not that useful. Um, Cold Snap, it's okay. Provides additional utility, shorter cooldown, longer freeze. It's okay, but I would really recommend Bone Chill or Deep Freeze. Deep Freeze, it buffs your DPS by a lot. 10% crit chance, that's like 15-20% to 20 more damage. And yeah, that's good, but I prefer Bone Chill. Because Bonchi not, uh, not also buffs your damage, but also the damage of your group, which is great, which Black Hole does not. So, I use Bone Chill, it procs my Tarasha, so I have my Cold Spell, and, and it, it's really great to burst down elites with that 35% more damage. So, the passives Audacity. Use it when you get when you can get up close and uh, up close and up personal. 15 yards is really very small. That's like this radius here. So you, if I don't know, my scoundrel would be an elite. I would have to stand here to make a destiny uh, effective. So only use it when you're quite tanky. Unwavering bull, absolute no-brainer with any channeling ability. 1.5 seconds is really not that much and as you can see my toughness goes from 10.3 to 13.3 so 2 million toughness and 10% damage just with the passives that's great um, blur definitely use that don't make stuff like glass cannon damage is really not that important with this build use blur it's great and for the last slot astral presence is a possibility if your arcane power is not that high. Dominance, also great. Um, I used that before, but after I got some life on kill on my gear, I switched to um, Elemental Exposure to buff my damage and the damage from my group uh, by 20%, like most of the time. So that's great. Unstable Anomaly, mm, you can use that, but I think they are better passes. Illusionist, also nice if you really um, want to burst through the content with low teleport cooldowns and that extra movement speed and you don't need the rest of the uh, passives. Temporal Flux, I use that for goblin packs and rifts if they are like 12 to 15 goblins because the 80% slow is really great for killing goblins because they don't spread that much apart. So, the items. I will go over the best in slot items and why you want to have the stats on them that they have. And from that you can pretty much decide what you will use your own if you find if it's good or usable or not. So, best in slot weapon, Odin Sun. I didn't think, uh, thought this was true and maybe a lot of you guys would disagree but Odin's Sun is actually best in slot. Unfortunately, it's extremely hard to get a good one. This wrote very good. It has okay damage. It has the percent damage roll. It has intelligence, which is good. Um, and it has life on kill as a secondary, which is uh, the best secondary stat you can have on a weapon, which pretty much... Um, it's like dominance, but it's like having a great passive as a secondary on a weapon, belt, pants, whatever. So if you get life from kill, great. And Odin Sun rolls percent lightning damage, unless it's bugged, but that's another story. That you can re-roll into a socket or what's missing, like if you miss percent damage or something. So what makes this weapon so great? Well, it's the proc. 24% chance to chain lightning enemies when you hit them. You might think, well, Thunder Fury does that. Yes, and both proc Tarasha, which is also a reason why you use that weapon, but the proc of Odin's Sun does much more damage 
than the Prague of um, Thunder Fury. The overall DPS of uh, Odin Sun and Thunder Fury was the same DPS with a good roll. Odin Sun does around 20% more damage. I tested that on GOM on Torment 6, many runs, I have a good Thunder Fury. Um, this one too, uh, 2400 DPS and a pretty good uh, secondary proc. This can go uh, below 300%, so um, as you can see, I should gain 10% more damage with the Thunder Fury. But actually I, I lose DPS on single target and AoE when I use this Thunder Fury. Quite sad because Thunder Fury is such a cool weapon, but if you get hands on a good uh, Odin Sun, use it. Now, builds. I use Asharas because I didn't get my hands on Ice Climbers. Um, illusionary Boots from the Bounty Quest in Act 2 are pretty good as well, but you can easily craft Asharas and just use them until you find Ice Climbers, so that's great. Arcane Torment damage on it is a must. You want to have Int, you want to have Vitality, and you want to have either Movement Speed or Armor or all Resist, what you prefer. Armor or Aura Resist are better for survivability. Movement speed if you go for more damage because then you can more then you can invest more points in intelligence in your first core paragon chart. Offhand, I recommend Tarashas. Pretty decent stats. As always, you wanna have, you wanna have high average damage, you want int, crit, and most importantly arcane torrent damage. Um, 13 to 15 percent would be fine. But I know how hard it is to get a good roll on these items. As you can see, I rerolled that quite a bit. Current cost at 1.6 million. And you can see the list of possible outcomes is huge. So you have to get quite lucky to get Arcane Torrent damage. But in my opinion, if you have the gold and if you have the Forgotten Souls, do it. Pants. Definitely a Shara's Pace. It took me like 20 to 30 crafts to get with to get this one, but it's quite easy to uh, cra to find this material. And since you don't need pants anymore to craft them, but this uh, reusable parts that I never used before, but I was quite happy that uh, happy that I had 3,000 of them. So, what do you want? You want definitely you want to have two sockets. Either you roll them in or you roll them when you craft them. You want to have high int, high vitality, and or or resist, and most importantly, that's why I, re uh, why I crafted this pants so many times, is life after each kill. Same for the belt. I got really lucky with this Tire Russia belt. Um, it pretty much rolled all the stats I wanted, and just I rerolled just the intelligence to maximum, so get a little bit more damage. But life after each kill on the belt, pants and your weapon are really important. You can also get it on your chest if you want, but um, to get a really good Harasha chest you will really have to have some luck. Well, belt slot. Potentially best in slot would be a witching hour, but since the chance of getting a witching hour is 0.89%, um, Tarasha's belt is fine if you find it. Um, if you want to switch to the Witching Hour, you would need a Tarasha Amulet. And to get a really good Tarasha Amulet, you pretty much have to get super lucky. I found two so far and they both were absolutely unusable. So, Tarasha spell is fine. You can use uh, Harrington's Waste Guard to buff your DPS substantially if you uh, open a chest. But I would go for either Tarasha spell, which provides a lot of survivability, or Witching Hour, which provides a lot more damage. Chest, Tarasha's Relentless Pursuit, period. It always comes with three sockets, it always has intelligence, and it always has vitality. Which means you really only need to roll one good stat, which in my case was armor. I was really happy that I got armor. Um, because then I could reroll the attack speed to elite damage reduction. Don't let the attack speed on the chest because you get some DPS. You don't need it. Never. Ever. Reroll the attack speed to elite damage reduction. It took me quite some time to get that. I don't um, remember how many tries. 
Uh, not so many actually, like 30. And yeah, it's really worth it. If you get a good secondary like um, melee or range damage reduction or life after each kill, that's great. Next slot, Andarius Visage. There's no helm slot that boosts your damage by that amount. You can get any rare or legendary helm with intelligence, crit, I don't know, vitality or resist armor or something like that for the defenses and arcane torment damage. But you will never surpass an Andarius Visage because that helm has arcane damage possibly rolled on that. I got very lucky to get a helm like this. You have to roll an Andarius Visage with crit and either arcane damage or arcane torrent damage. I got arcane damage so I rerolled the attack speed to arcane torrent damage with max, uh, which makes this item absolutely best in slot in terms of DPS. Gloves. Just craft Asharas for the two set uh, bonus with, together with the pants. 100 or resist and 20% life is great and since you can farm the materials so easy it's really a slot that you can acquire pretty fast. You don't want attack speed on there, obviously. And light crit damage crit is good. Shoulders. Definitely all kills power. There's no better shoulders. Like, <laughs> um, these two set and three set bonus is, in my opinion, absolutely overpowered. And since there are no better slots for shoulders and braces, just use orchids. Found the material from Freckless Ghost or Kandabab Quest or the Archiver, Tomb Keeper, just google how to get this um, crafting material and craft the shoulders. You want to have high end, high vitality, armor or all resist and resource cost reduction. Yes! Really important on the shoulder slot. You could get um, another percent life roll or armor or all resist roll but I really value this uh, resource cost reduction very high because I can channel Arcane Tone so much longer. Bracers, also all kids for the 3 path bonus with the Ring of uh, Royal Grandeur. You want to have Arcane Damage, Int, Vitality and Crit Chance. The secondaries could be potentially melee and range damage reduction, but good luck crafting a hundred of these uh, bracers. And since they cost um, 110, uh, 120 arcane dust, you have to farm a lot. Like, that's 40 to 50 blue items that you have to pick up to farm one of these puppies. So, good luck. Best in slot amulet would be Tyrasha's Allegiance with arcane damage and a crit roll or int and a crit roll or arcane damage and a crit roll since the crit damage is base but it rolls from I believe 65 to 100 so you have to get a little bit lucky um, I got this Moonlight Ward, it was my second Moonlight Ward and it rolled pretty nicely I just got the uh, int roll on that one it always has arcane damage, it always has crit and since I got the int roll I could just roll the uh, crit damage onto that, making it a really good amulet. So, rings. You definitely want to have a ring of ro royal grandeur. You really only have to use the braces and shoulders for orchid set, and you only have to have three tars, uh, tar Russia pieces for the four set bonus, which is great. You don't need the helm. You don't need the belt, and this is just max DPS with this ring. There might be rare rings that provide more damage, but in the end, you will never be as efficient as if with, as if you were using this ring. Just to act one bounties, farm like a hundred caches, and this is a little tri trick. Farm like a hundred uh, caches on torments you prefer. You can even do normal; it doesn't really matter. And then you enter the game, open one cache, and if the ring drops, great, you open the rest. If it does not drop, rejoin the game. P 
people might think, why would you do that? Well, Diablo 3 works on loot tables. So when I join a game, a random loot table is generated, which has some items on them. And if this ring is not on the loot table, I could open 200 bags and never get the ring. That's why many of you might be frustrated, because after opening several bags, they haven't seen this ring yet. But with this technique, I assure you, out of 100 bags, you will easily see 2 to 5 rings. And one of them might roll good. Mine rolled average damage, which is pretty good. And I just wrote the crit damage, uh, crit chance on that. Out of the same bags, I also got this one, which was pretty mad because it had crit damage, which I searched for, but then it rolled strength, uh, strength. So, yeah, might use it on a barb later on. And the other slot, obviously, Stone of Jordan. Try to get that arcane damage onto that. If you have arcane damage. Definitely roll crit or crit damage onto there. You have to test this out, which provides more DPS, either 6% crit chance or 50% crit damage. And it's definitely the best in slot ring. It does not look like a lot of damage, but if you only look at the arcane damage and elite damage, you increase their damage uh, against elites by up to 50%. I, in the total, have an elite damage buff to 45%, so my 1.4 million damage, take 50% onto that, and that's my damage against elites, which you really only need in this game because trash dies instantly. So that's to the items. As you can see, I crafted 5 slots of my items, which only uh, leads to 8 items that I needed. And since you can gamble them, as I mentioned before, it's, it got pretty easy. Except for the weapon and amulet, of course, and the rings. Because they cost a shit ton. And if you're gambling specifically for an Odin Sun, good luck. You might need some dozens of thousands of shards to get one. But since Odin Sun is not really a rare weapon, you'll probably find it anyway. So Moonlight Ward is probably a bit rarer. And the tile armor definitely is. Stone of Jordan. Also, you have to get a bit lucky. But after a couple of weeks of farming, you will probably look at some good items. So, now, let's stop talking more plain. So, actually, see uh, this build in action. I'll have the Templar real click. Why the Templar? Because of Inspire grants 1.4 arcane power regeneration um, you also want to have this token on your Templar which makes him invulnerable here's Justin Lan Justice Lantern because I don't know this pick sticker because it's quite cool because it had 5 primary stats and the shield to free sometimes this shield also procs a uh, Tarasha set funny enough also does his weapon so I wouldn't even have to use Frost Nova, but I use it because groups, you know. And we'll do some rifting now. And let's hope we don't get fucked. Because all the all the time I do a video, I get the absolute worst Act 5 mobs ever. Great, Act 4. So, pull of reflection, that's nice. Um whether to pick um, Frenzy Shrines or not, you can do that. I mean, the 25% 20 per, uh, attack speed bonus for 2 minutes don't really kill you, but as I mentioned before, just don't get it on your gear. As you can see, Torment 4 maps here. This is an elite pack. Yeah. This were 200 million damage. So, as you can see, single target and AoE damage, uh, AoE damage of this build is absolutely outstanding. Um, as I mentioned before, groups, uh, group utility, not that great, but I think it's fine. As a DD, you don't really have to do uh, provide that much utility. If you want to, you probably want to uh, play the Wand of Rose back, 
which is high damage against trash, not so much elites as I have found out, but it provides great utility. Since you don't have any cooldowns, you can use Black Hole, um, you can use Frost Nova, you can use um, Slow Time, whatever you want to buffer your group. And yeah. But I can turn on this. Pretty cool. Sometimes that happens. If you're a little bit desynced, your arcane tones will do funny stuff and go anywhere but not where you want them to. So then you have just to move a little bit so the game resyncs. Um, not really that much of a problem. As you can see, the freeze is very nice for these ex executioners, for example, because they don't hit you when they're frozen. And you can cancel elite attacks and something with it. You can also do that with black hole, but the frost knob animation is very sm smooth, very crisp and fast. So you can just cast it by walking by. So I really like that. Now we have an elite pack here. Orbiter. Watch out for that one. Orbiter does more damage than you think. These small bots tick at Tom and Four for about. Uh, 7k for me, the big ball more than double that, so I really underestimated the orbiter damage until I died a couple times to it. And yeah, don't step into arcane and stuff, but I think that's obvious. Don't make the mistake on high atonements when you're a bit fragile to teleport into elite packs that's like number one reason of dying because teleport now has an uh, 11 second cooldown and if you're not running illusionist and you jump into an elite pack and it jails you walls you and puts some ground effects onto you you might just die And as I mentioned, I can do Torment 5 easily. Torment 6 is a little bit but a little bit of a challenge, but I can probably do it. Nonetheless, I farm on Torment 4 because it's chill. As you can see, the procs of uh, Tarash are really great. I really like the um, Fire Media proc because it's more accurate than the one the wizard would cast himself, so that's cool. <coughs> the little bots that are surrounding me um, are the procs of Moonlight Ward for those who don't really know them. Their damage is not that great, even in, with me having over 80% uh, arcane damage. They only crit for like 3 to 5 million, so not really that worth it, but nonetheless, Moonlight Ward is a really great amulet. As, uh, at least for this spec. So you can see Arcane is doing some damage. As you might have seen before, I took a lot of damage from these. Um, Moon Clan Spear Thrower Impaler, uh, these Moon Clan Impalers here. So that's also my argument why I don't use Ice No Armor. It reduces melee damage, but really, mobs with melee damage barely even hit me. So I take most damage from ranged attacks or from ground effects. So um, reducing this melee damage by 12% doesn't really do anything to me. And my energy armor reduces my melee damage and my range damage, so that's why I prefer it. Some might use storm armor to proc arcane uh, and proc the Tarasha armor. But yeah, again, no survivability really. There isn't any big rune that comes to my mind that's really outstanding. There's uh power of a storm or something that reduces arcane per uh, cost but as you can see my arcane power barely moves so I don't need that the 12% um, uh, the 8% 
Razor Scars Reduction on my gear plus the 10% in Paragon Points, as you can see here, um, plus my slow weapon, Odin Sun, really make up for it. I don't need Arcane Power Regen. At the moment I can channel about 1 uh, billion damage with Arcane Torrent, which kills most Rift Guardians. Um, depending on what they do. I really hate this rift layout. It's so random. It's so annoying. And if you get X ox or something in here, you really are in trouble. And I hate mobs with knockback. That's another point of the Ashara set that I really like, that you have all your followers up. Um, the heal of the Templar actually saved me dozens of times. So, until you get those Ice Climbers, definitely use the Ashara boots. Alone for the heal of the Templar in groups, that's really useful. I might speed this up a bit if this rift takes too long, but I usually don't need longer than six to eight minutes to complete the Torment 4 rift, so I think it, sh it should be fine. Let's see what we got here. Yep. Gold skin, a piece of trash. I thought about oh, uh, gold skin plus gold wrap because <laughs> that seems kind of cool to buff your armor on the ranges of over 60,000, but... Uh, you don't need it. <laughs> so, how many mobs need we? Okay. You can really see the effectiveness of uh, elite damage. As you can see, even if I'm utilizing a lot of elite damage gear which lowers actually my gear against trash uh, even with that trash is not a problem and elite dies so fast that's really great I don't even know how long this video will be so we will see I did some notes actually because shooting video that long we can't really keep all the facts. If you have any questions so far, post them in the comments, message me on YouTube, or just add me in game. So, what I just did is very dangerous. Um, I teleported into a pack with Arcane Enchanted. If they blocked me, I could have easy, easily died there, so don't do that. I just do it because I can kind of survive on Torment 4, no matter what I'm doing, so... And the packs I'm getting here are really easy, actually, and these are um, mostly Act 1 mobs. There you could see some of the Moonlight procs. Um, yeah, 3, 4, 5 million damage, not that great. And you can see the life after each kill really well. I have 17k, so each mob I kill, I kill. So in groups, if you assist the kill, you won't get anything. So in groups, life after each kill is not that great. But each mob I kill, I get uh, 17,000 life for, which is awesome and I hate this rift layout need more time. 98% another like 40 to 50 mobs here as you can see the fire meters are kinda aiming for the enemies which is cool
And yeah, getting the entire piece is not that hard anymore. I hope we will see the rift boss soon. Of course. I hate ghosts. These are so annoying. Running into walls all the time. And these are just very uh, not arcane tone friendly mobs because they move all the time, which makes it kind of hard to follow them and hit them. So, Frostnova was really good for that. Just freeze them and hit them in the face. That was a goblin. And the Rift Guardian. Let's see. Okay. This one is easy. Does some lightning damage, but really. And you can see. My single type of DS is pretty good. This mob has 1.4 billion HP. And it goes down, and it goes down pretty fast. I'm not saying that this is the best single target DPS build. There are better ones, like the new Crusader builds. But as you can see, you will do fine. And there it dies, leaving no legendary, but a forgotten soul, and some blood shots. So, that was a rift run. I hope you enjoyed the video in some way. I hope you could learn something from it. And I hope you could decide whether you want to play this back or not. Um, if you have any suggestions, post them into the comments. I would really appreciate that. And yeah. Thanks for watching. This was Latmir with its arcane torrent guide kinda long-ish I guess so we will see us in the next video I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time